Hey, what's up my YouTube family? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make slow baked barbecue ribs. Yep, slow baked barbecue ribs. And the key ingredient to this, because we're not using an outdoor grill, which is gonna give it that same flavor as if it was cooked on an outdoor grill, is the liquid smoke. Yep, liquid smoke. That right there is a game changer. So right here, I already cleaned my baby back ribs and the membrane has already been removed. So when I flip it over, I'm not gonna have to do that. So right now, what I'm going to do is just trim off some of this fat. Not all of it because this, uh, leaving some of the fat on is, you know, of good use because it won't allow the ribs to dry, dry out. Because what we are going to do is bake it uncovered for two and a half hours and then take it out, wrap it in foil and make it again for another two hours there is meat under there guys so don't you worry so i'm just going to get rid of these pieces that are on the ends because i don't want them to burn and probably just this right here okay so i'm gonna flip this all right so i'm gonna get started with uh prepping our seasonings so you're gonna go with the uh, liquid, liquid smoke first. And you don't wanna give it too much because this flavoring is overpowering and very strong. So make sure you get the sides. Wow, this smells amazing already. I feel like I'm at a barbecue. Well, it smells like. And when you're seasoning this, make sure you get the sides too. Now, we're going to go with our yellow mustard, which isn't about the flavor. It's just, you know, a binder so that these seasonings can stick because I'm not going to rub the uh, seasonings in. And exactly what you do to one side, you want to do to the other. And remember to get your sides. Oh, guys, let me run down the uh, seasonings that I will be using. So I'm just going to be using a basic seasoning. Okay, so these, these three back here. Of a later use which is honey brown sugar and one fourth cup of orange juice now when it comes to that juice back there you can use any juice of choice just definitely not like grape <laughs> or you know any fruity drinks only fruity drink that you should use other than orange juice is apple juice and if you have beer is an option and also some broth okay so other than that, we already used the mustard. I have some onion powder, some Tony Sacheris, not sure how to properly say that, some uh, Creole seasoning, black pepper, all-purpose seasoning, basically seasoning salt, liquid smoke, you already seen me use that. I got some uh, garlic powder and some smoked paprika. Okay, so let's continue on with this. So I'm going to go down with my black pepper first. Remember, this stays as is there will be no rubbing the seasonings in you want to make sure you get to sprinkle on the sides as well okay i'm going to go down with some onion powder and there's no specific measurement to seasoning your meats just want to make sure that it's well coated so it's basically going to be to your liking and what you can take this is the garlic powder and guys right now you should be having your oven preheated to uh 275 degrees so that when I'm, you know, when I'm done with this, what I'm going to be doing is putting this in for the two and a half hours on that temperature. And this is my Creole seasoning. And you want to be generous with this because this is going to bake for so long. You want these seasonings to seep right on through. And with this mustard as a binder, that will definitely happen. Okay, now I'm going to go down with the smoked paprika. Now, since we are not going to be massaging it in, we're just going to give it a pat to make sure that all of the seasonings adhere to this meat with the help of our mustard. 
Okay. Any seasoning that fell, you can just get it and apply it to the sides. And guys, at this point, you should already be subscribed to the channel. Help a brother out. Thank you in advance as always. So I'm gonna be flipping this over so we can repeat what we just done. I don't wanna to touch anything with this, okay, cause that's my seasoning. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do, got a little seasoning on it. The same thing that we did here. You wanna apply your liquid smoke first. Now for the mustard. And guys, I'm not gonna be baking this in a uh, in this foil pan that I'm using to uh, season it. And I'm gonna be placing it on a, a wire wrap. But if you don't have one, it's definitely okay to use a foil pan. It should come out just as good. Okay, now for the seasoning. Same as we did to the back. Black pepper. Okay, my onion powder. Generous amount of that. Garlic powder. Creole seasoning. All-purpose seasoning. Seasoning salt and the smoked pepper. So now we're gonna give that a press to make sure the seasonings are adhering to the meat and whatever is on the sides of the pan that didn't get to stay on the top of the meat. Just push it over to the sides of the meat so that can be seasoned as well. So now I'm gonna get my wire rack and I'm gonna place it on there and pop it into the oven and I will be showing you how I do so. Okay, so here's my wire rack. And I put foil at the bottom, you know, just in case there are some drippings, which I'm sure there will be. So I'm gonna put this in the oven, like I said, at 275 degrees for two and a half hours. And after that, we're gonna come back and that's when we will use these last three ingredients. Okay guys, our ribs are completed for the first round of cooking. This is the two and a half hour marking period for our ribs to be cooked. So everything is sticking to it. All of the, this is very hot by the way. The seasonings are sticking to it and now I'm going to place them onto some foil so we can use the uh, brown sugar, honey, and orange juice that I showed you earlier. All right, so once again, here are my ribs on the cooling rack. They are done. This is after the two and a half hours. So now I'm going to be placing them onto this foil here. And I'm going to be drizzling some honey, sprinkling some brown sugar, then adding some butter. Then once I seal it halfway, I will be pouring in the orange juice. Okay, so let's drizzle this honey. Okay, just wanna do a little zigzag motion. And I had this covered in saran wrap earlier so that it doesn't get hard. You know how brown sugar can be. Okay, you just wanna sprinkle a generous amount. And guys, the reason why I'm choosing to use um, orange juice instead of apple or broth or beer is because the acidity will help tenderize the meat as well. I'm gonna cover it with some uh, pieces of butter. Okay, so five pieces of butter. Now, we're gonna take our fabulous rack of ribs and face it, skin, uh, meat side down. Now, I'm going to drizzle this with some honey as well, and that should be good. Some more brown sugar. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you wanna do to the other. And brown sugar works well with pork, but we're only putting butter on, you know, just one side. We don't need any more of that butter. That's just to make just to make sure the other side is uh, tender. Now, I'm going to you wrap this meat. I'm gonna create like a basic wrap here. I'm gonna bring this side over.
the orange juice is also going to help this steam to leak. Like I said, the uh, orange juice is just a quarter of a cup. You can press on it, guys. Just make sure it's sealed. All right, so now I'm going to be placing this back onto my rack. Let's get this wire right. So there's no need for cleaning anything. We're just gonna put this back on the same rack. For another two and a half hours, well, another two hours, I'm sorry. Just make sure everything is sealed. Let's pop this in the oven for two hours. And when it's like about 10 to 15 minutes close to uh, getting ready to take this out, we're gonna warm up our barbecue sauce, but we will be doing that together. So I'll be right back. Okay guys, so it's about that time. I just pulled the ribs out of the oven. And it's time to unwrap them and see what we are working with. Ah. Let's do it, let's do it. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. All right. Let's see what we've done. Whoa, look at that juice, baby. And this is normal, guys. Don't worry, don't worry. Just wanna make sure I don't make a mess while unwrapping this. Yes, yes, yes. We did good, guys. Okay, so I can see that the bone is gonna come right off. Look at that. Wow. But that's not what we're doing right now. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is get this out of the foil and onto our rack so we can put the barbecue sauce. Guys, these are our ribs. And let me give you guys a close up. The bones are coming right out of them. These are tender. I mean, tender. One of the bones already fell out when I was trying to adjust it. And you can see right here, the meat is tender and ready to fall right off. So now what I'm going to do is put our barbecue sauce on, mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna just drizzle some of it on. After we do this, we're going to uh, place these back in the oven for about 15 minutes. I feel scared to brush them because I feel like the meat is gonna come right off and you can feel how soft it is, you know, working with it. Wanna make sure you get the sides too. And if you are not so much a, a fan of uh, barbecue sauce and you wish to use less, that is absolutely fine. Remember, you have to eat this. Just like to make sure that my ribs do have enough sauce on it. Because when it bakes, again, for the 15 minutes, it's going to dry up a little bit, which really just allows for the barbecue sauce to hold its shape onto the, uh, the ribs. Okay, so that looks good to me. The sides are done. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over so we can get our main side. Guys, I have to admit that flip was not easy. It definitely wasn't. The meat is so tender and soft that it started to break off on me. You can see that there's a, a crack there from the end of trying to lift it. And also over here, right here. But I didn't want to push it anymore. So let's get the rest of that sauce on so that we can be done with this. We have 15 minutes to go. 
after we do this sauce. Let's brush that on, make it look nice and pretty. I know this is going to be wonderful. The whole time it was cooking, man. Oh man, my house was smelling so good. You smell the sweetness from the brown sugar. Definitely the smokiness from the uh, the liquid smoke that we put on earlier. And the rest of the season is, oh man. Yeah, these are gonna be amazing. Wanna make sure it's everywhere. All right, that looks good to me. Does it look good to you guys? You better say yes. <laughs> That's nice enough. So let me give you guys a close up. Okay. That's our sauce. So I'm gonna put this in the oven, like I said, for 15 minutes. Then when we take them out, we're gonna let them rest for 10 minutes, maybe 15. And then we're gonna cut these up. And you already know, we're gonna taste them. All right, so I will be right back when these are done. Guys, here are our ribs, fresh out the oven. Currently letting them rest probably for another five minutes before we cut them. Look at that. Perfection. Mm. Can't wait to cut into these. All right, guys, it's time to cut. So what it is is that I have some parchment paper here on top of a uh, cutting board because I didn't want a chance taking this entire rack off and placing it onto this parchment paper because this meat is way too tender. And I didn't want a chance breaking it up to where it doesn't even look presentable for us to cut, you know, for video purposes. All right, so I'm just gonna follow in between the bone and I'm going to see just how this came out. Wow, that was easy. Okay guys, so I have to let you know, I did have a hard time trying to get these beautiful baby back ribs cut only because they were way too tender. The meat was really, really, really soft and it just started to break apart, you know, as I was cutting it. And I just wanted to be honest with you guys because everything doesn't come out perfect all of the time, but it does have an amazing flavor. And hopefully when you try to do this recipe, you will have a better chance at getting your ribs cut perfectly than I did. But uh, with that being said, I appreciate you guys watching the video and sharing this moment with me. So I will be tasting it, even though they don't look as appetizing, but they are amazing and they smell amazing. So I am going to still taste it. I'm going to choose this piece. You see what I mean? <laughs> right off the bone but that meat is so tender and we are going to taste this beer. wow wow that flavor guys oh my god trust me wow that was about to fall this flavor with the combination of seasonings that I use along with that liquid smoke is amazing, guys. I kid you not. This is the honest to God truth. So I recommend that you do try this recipe. Definitely give it a try. And like I said, guys, excuse me for how it ended up. But um, once again, thank you. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.